Uh, Vucic told reporters outside a polling station that Djokovic was subjected not only to intellectual but also physical torture by Australian authorities. He deplored the political decision and blamed Australia for lacking clarity in vaccination requirements and exemptions, saying it was very easy for the Australian authorities to say from the very beginning that only the vaccinated, the inoculated people could enter. I talked to Novak Djokovic a bit ago after the decision. I encouraged him and I told him that I can't wait to see him in Serbia, that he gets back to his country, gets back to where he is always welcome. And the ones who think they showed how they stick to their principles have only shown that they have never had any in the first place. You've been maltreating the best tennis player in the world for 10 to 11 days, only to hand him a decision on the 11th you knew you'd be handing him on the first day anyway. Djokovic had been granted a visa to enter Australia with a COVID-19 infection on December 16th, uh, providing the basis for a medical exemption from Australia's requirements that all visitors be vaccinated. The exemption was organized through Tennis Australia. Djokovic, the world's top men's player, was first detained by immigration authorities on January 6th, ordered released by a court on January 10th, and then detained again on Saturday, January 15th. I think that the court decision is scandalous. I'm disappointed. I think it demonstrates how the rule of law is functioning, or better to say, not functioning in some other countries. I find it unbelievable we have two completely contradictory court decisions within the span of only a few days. After 11 days of physical and psychological harassment of Djokovic, as the Serbian Prime Minister, I'm not happy, but one should not be too emotional. In any case, I can't wait to see Novak Djokovic in our own country, in Serbia. The Serbian player boarded an Emirates flight bound from Melbourne to Dubai on Sunday evening, just hours after the ruling.